probably one of the biggest boot camps most requested videos that i've ever had on this channel and today we're gonna go right into it if you guys are seeing it on christmas merry christmas let's get right into the video now time of sales is the most important thing when it comes to my strategy itself if you're trading how i'm trading and you need to see it instantly seeing the buyers and sellers instantly the time of sales is one of the most important things and the, one of the most overlooked things when it comes to scalping so why do we use a time of sales in the first place it's real time not lagging you get to see the orders real time the buyers and the sellers instantly instead of having a lagging indicator that's telling me what price action did previously again the market is like an auction you probably heard it thousands and thousands of times on the internet but if there's more buyers and sellers and buyers want to continue to buy 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 that's what's going to raise the price and as the buyers are putting their bid higher and higher and higher then the sellers will see that and then they'll also place their ask higher higher and higher and that's how the market essentially goes up and then vice versa for the opposite direction as you guys are going to see in this video now the execution part of it you guys are going to see the orders real time we're going to go over live examples and everything like that when it comes to time and sales but we're also going to go over level two and level two are the orders waiting to be executed versus the time of sales are orders already being executed. So let's see what the next slide is all about. So basically, this is a rough thing of how it worked. I'm taking this from my previous boot camp that I did live in my discord link is in the description below. But how it works, essentially, there's people willing to buy at a certain price. So Vegas and Seb. They put an order for 10 and 10 right there. Let's say this is $500 a share. So the 500 walls right here at 10 and 10. And then people want to sell, let's say at $510, $520 right here. The closest bid and the closest ask is going to be that spread. That's why sometimes when you see a low volume stock, the spread is way too big because there's not enough orders to get that bid and ask as close as possible. But this is essentially how the level two works you guys can see that there's orders waiting to be executed on both sides these people are waiting to sell and these people are waiting to buy and in order for these to sell there needs to be buyers which is why if you see a big ask wall you need a lot of buyers in order to break that and the same thing with vice versa so this is how it works lander market sells 15 shares so a lot of people you know when they first get started they think oh you know i'm selling this so it's gonna go right to the ask no when I'm selling, if I market sell, I'm not gonna show up on the ask because if I market sell, I'm not gonna get the best sell price possible. The closest buyer to the current price is gonna get that. So for this example, this guy right here is gonna get filled when I market sell. My market sell goes into those people waiting to buy the shares itself. Those are the ones that put the orders out and they're waiting to be executed. If I market sell, it's gonna go right to that bid 15 shares so that removes this guy right and then this removes five of this so now price is going to show down to here so let's say this was a 500 dollars price and this was 490 now price is going to show 490 because that was the last price where the stock was at and that might seem super confusing but you guys are going to see live examples of this as well then if someone buys something right so let's say i market bought then the price if the ask doesn't move down, the price is going to come right back up to here and that's what it's going to show. And then there's going to be that spread. And then that's how price starts to come up because then let's say I want to limit buy at 500. So right here, that will move the price up because no one, if someone market sells and there was no wall right here, the price would be down to here, right? It would come back to 490. But since I want to buy at 500, I put my bid in right here. Now, if someone wants to market sell, I'm going to take that liquidity and I am going to buy those shares at that 500 and then that price would stay at that 500. And that's why the bigger the wall, the harder it is to break. And that's why you see, if you ever look at the time of sales, when it's about to break the key level, you'll see 500, 500, 500, 500, or whatever the key level is because they're all hitting that bid right there. And this is a perfect example of that. This is the wall right here. And without even doing anything, this is how some people... I wouldn't even call it spoofing, but you can call it spoofing, call it whatever you want. A lot of people scare off buyers or sellers, depending on you know what direction it is, by placing these fake huge walls right here, 150 wall, 100 wall. And if this isn't going to break and your bid is right here, why are you going to try and buy as close as possible to that when you know this could definitely come down because there's so, there's so much sellers in that area. And that's where a lot of people take reversals or once you see this break all those buyers in order to break this key level 
this will absolutely fly. So, you know, a lot, there's spoofing that goes on with the level two, having these big orders just waiting there. So then this bid will just automatically come down because they see that huge wall on the ask and then vice versa. Now, if I market sell about a hundred shares, this is exactly what's going to happen. I rip through this wall, I rip through this wall, and then I rip 50 off of this one as well, bringing the price all the way back down. What usually happens is now the ask can come down, bring it down, bring it down like that. And then once people try and sell at this area, that's what continues to keep driving the price down. But let's say they don't do that because they don't want to sell lower than this. The buyer is going to start winning again. The buyers could bring it right back up. The price is going to show right here until either the bid comes up and then someone tries to sell right there or the ask comes back down and then this is where the current price is going to be at. Now, again, this could be super confusing, but definitely wait until you see the live videos, how to read the level two. Now, this is book map. I don't really use a level two as much because time and sales just shows me everything and I'm always portraying those psychological levels. So you could just kind of tell if there's a big wall there or not by the reactions. But you guys can see, look how big this area is right here. 262, 151, 200. There's a nice big wall right here. Right in the middle is probably about 400. So this is a buyer wall. This is a seller wall, 386. Buyers can't get above that until they're able to break that 386. And in order to break that, you need a lot of buyers. And then once you get a lot of buyers, it flies right through. And we're gonna see a live video of that in a second. How to read the time of sales. Now this is the bid, price and ask. And like I said previously, see how the bid is coming up and look at the ask, right? The ask is at 26, the bid is at 16. Then you can see by the price, where they're buying or selling it at. If it's closer to the ask, buyers are coming in, that's right in the middle. Buyers are coming in right there. Look, they started hitting the ask, price is coming up. And then you guys can see the jump from 25 to 29, the sellers are not willing to sell it for lower. So now they're bringing that price up. Now we need the bid to come up. The bid comes up to 22, then it comes up to 26, and then the ask is staying the same. So now price is getting closer and closer. We need to break the 30s. They're touching the 29s. So buyers are starting to be in control here and they need to break that 29 on the ask for us to continue to keep going. Now above the ask, again, colors do matter, but they don't matter as much as just literally reading the bid and ask. But below the bid and above the ask are very aggressive market orders at the bid, at the ask. They're okay. Market orders and the inside is literally just in the middle of the market orders, but aggressive buying, aggressive selling. All right, so here is a video why does level two matter? Think of level two as this big wall right here. What happens when buyers or sellers are able to break that wall? You guys are gonna see here in a second. Once that wall breaks, all that water is able to break that wall absolutely explodes just like that. And that's why once a breakout happens, that's why we have that huge aggressive move in that direction because of this, a literally perfect example. So what we look for in the time of sales, the velocity and the bid and ask follow through in the direction that we want. Level two, we look at any walls. Now, think of it like the bread and butter. That's literally our bread and butter when it comes to our breakout strategy. The level two is orders waiting to be executed and then time of sales are orders being executed off of that level two. Now, we're gonna go over some time of sales example right here. We're looking for, in what direction are we looking for? If we're looking for upside, we want that ask to keep going up and the bid to keep going up and we need to see velocity. Now, you guys are gonna see how slow this is. Look how slow it is and not only do we want to look for velocity because people just think we look for velocity, you also want to see the bid and ask follow through. If we see 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, just like that, you know there's buyers there. If it's just at 40s and then 43 and then 44, no matter if there's velocity or not, we're not going nowhere. So it's not really that strong. But look how slow this is. It's in the 40s, 39, 40s, 47, 40s, stuck at the 40s. Now we're back down at 30s. It's not as confident, right? We're in the... 38s, 40s, yeah, not as confident, 40s. It's too slow. I would never take that to the upside right off like that. And the tape is speeding up a little bit, but it's barely going anywhere. It's still in the 40s. Still in the 40s. I haven't even touched 50s yet. Now the ax touched 50s. Now we need to see the bid touch 50s for us to continue and see how the ask kept coming right under that 50s. It's not a confident move. 40s, 47, 46. Now we're in the 50s but this is way too slow. This looks like normal price action. Then we came right back under the 50s on the bid, but the ask is holding the 50s, but it's just way too slow for me to take that. 
Now we're in the almost touching the 60s. Now we're back down in the 50s. 55. Now we're touching the 60s and then right back down. See how like it keeps going above, back down. Velocity is coming in. Now we're in the 40s again. Still in the 40s. Now we're in the 30s. 30s. Now we're in the 20s. But see how aggressive those sellers were? You don't want to mess with them at all. That just shows you, you know, how to not get faked out. But that was a pretty easy, like, you could just tell the momentum was not there whatsoever. Now, if we want to break the 60s, right, we could anticipate it above this 55 area right there. Or just wait until the 60s break on the ask for me to get in. And we'll see here in a second. Remember, we want to see velocity, the bid, and ask. We're still in the 30s. Remember, we're waiting until that 55 area. Buyer is sort of there. See how it's struggling in that 55 area. See what it wants to do there. 55. See, people would just get in right there when it flipped, and it's like uh, it was not aggressive. It was aggressive for a second, and then it like stops. We're waiting for that 55. And these are all trades that I've taken real time. So we're literally just rewatching the videos. See how slow, right back down. Someone definitely got faked out right there. 40s, 50s. See that aggressive pop and then it stops? A lot of people will get faked out because they just see velocity. But then the bid and ask, they don't really move. They don't get above that 55 area that we're talking about here. That would have been another fake out if you're just looking at velocity. Come right back down. It's still holding those 40s, though. It never really dipped under the 40s, which is a good sign if you're looking to take this to the upside. Buyers are there. One, two, three, four, five green candles in a row. You got to be careful. You really need to see velocity here to not get faked. We're still holding that 40s for now. Still holding. The ask is trying to hold above 50s. That's the first thing I want to see is the 50s holding the ask. 45, 44, 43, 47. 50s are on the ask now. Now we need to see the bid hold above those 50s. Still not there yet. They're holding the 40s though. I'll give them that. 55. So remember, we're looking at that 55 on the ask. 50s right there. So now we broke the 55s. Now we're stronger than we were previously. And if it's going to break... We need to see that aggressive velocity. You could be in here or you could give it another second to make sure it holds. Now the bid is holding 55. This is a great opportunity to anticipate before we break the 60s. Be in it just like that. Wait for the 60s to break on the ask. And that's how you know it will continue. But this is where I would be in right there. Boom, 60s. Now we need to make sure the 60s hold on the bid and continue on the ask, obviously, for us to continue. Or else we know it's a fake out if it comes under that 55 again. Still holding the 60s. Now we need to see 70s on the ask. 60s. See how 60s are trying to fail on the bid? As long as it holds on the ask, we're still good to go. And if it fails on the ask and comes under that, you might be in some trouble. Still holding the 60s on the ask. Now we're touching 70s. There goes, it's trying 70s. 70s on the bid. Here comes 80s on the ask, 80s on the ask. See how quicker that momentum's there, aggressiveness. Bid and ask continues to keep going and going and going. That's the buyers, that's the sellers right there. See how we're trying to hold the 80s. We touched the 80s and then we came right back down. We didn't do that in the 70s. When we were in the 60s, we just went to the 70s and then right to the 80s and then we kind of like chilled right there. You could start to take some off right there depending on you know, previous price action and stuff like that. But it's definitely you know a 20 cent move on, I think this is SPY could be like 15 percent you could give it a second or you could start taking some off like half off right there but it's still holding upper 70s i'll just give it another second this is where i start taking some off we already saw some weakness here in the 80s and then we go to the 90s and it's like it's not it's struggling a little bit and you know it's a great opportunity to take half off right there we're in the 90s see how we're touching the 90s on the ask i don't want to risk it definitely taking half off right there if i didn't already Right back in the 70s. Now, a stop loss is probably going to be breaking even on the rest of the contracts because this thing could still come up. You know, we're still above the 60s. We're in the 70s. Let's see what it wants to do. 80s. There goes 90s. See how aggressive that is? 70s, 80s, 90s, like that. It's not too aggressive, but the bid and ask is still come, like continuing. And there's no signs of sellers just yet in that 90s. 
starting to fold in that 90s. If we need to break that 395, we need those 90s to hold on the ask and on the bid. We're trying to hold 80s. The slips 80s is done. It's holding 80s. Now we're in the 90s. There goes that 395. All out right there. This is exactly what I would do right there. So here is an example of not getting faked out. Now, if we need 378 to break, we need that bid to break that 378 and then ask to follow through with that. See, we're down at 378. Look how slow that is, right? You guys see how slow this tape is moving? Look how slow this is, ready? You can't even tell the difference. If you didn't know 378 was a level, you wouldn't have been able to tell. Do you guys see how slow this time of sales is? Look how slow this is. You can't even tell something broke. That's when I wouldn't get in, right? We already see some signs of weakness, but this could definitely continue if there was momentum there and it stopped, right? Super slow time in sales. That's how you don't get faked out. And then we're right back above that 378. It's not worth it right there. Now it's going to try for it again. We need to see more velocity than there was previously. And we need to see that 378 hold under on the ask. See how we're touching 378 and you can't even tell. When did it break? You don't know, right? It's just way too slow for me to get in. Look how slow, even if it continues, I still wouldn't get in. I still wouldn't get FOMO because nine out of 10 times this would have been a fake out. And look right back up. It's way too slow for me to take it showing that it's just, there's a fight right there at 378. Sellers were not really in control there. Here's another one. This will really show you the speed. Now this is Tesla time of sales and Tesla usually goes crazy. So this looks fast. I mean, there is, buyers there right and there is sellers there as well there's a lot of volume coming in now it's your job to see the relative tape speed compared to previously so this is what it looks like now right and then look how fast this is going you guys can see the aggressive buying right there right we're in the tens we're in the 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s see velocity is there and you guys can see that velocity starts picking up but you could also see that that bid and ask just jump like that, right? That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's when I'm going to get in for that 192 break. Look at that, 80s, 90s. You can't even keep up with this, 20s, 30s. And that's the aggressiveness that I'm looking for on that bid and ask. Because you guys saw that it was fast here, but it stopped in the 10s. Now we're in 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. That's exactly what we want to look for. And look at that breakout. Just keeps going. Now, in order for this to break, we need to see 389 on that ask. Now, the ask is cut off a little bit, but we can see the bid. We want to see that 389 on the bid, or at least the price, since we can't see the ask right here. So 389 hit, and now it's trying to hold on the bid. Buyers are there. You guys can see that time of sales is flying right here. Look how quick that is. See how it jumped like that? Do it one more time. Look how slow, slow, fast. Look at that. Boom. 389 is holding on the bid. You could get in right there. And look at this, we need to see the 10s. Now we need to see the 20s. There's 20s, there's 30s, there's 40s. Look at that aggressiveness. Now I'm probably gonna take a half off right there just because we literally just came up 50, 60, 70 cents just like that on one single candle. And 70 cents on one single candle, the IV is gonna pump the contracts. The 389 finally broke. So it's definitely a good idea just to take at least half off there. I'd probably fully out right there just because we already had that huge move. And I'm a scalp trader, so that risk reward is at least a one to three right there. Because the quicker it came up, it could definitely come right back down. And it definitely needs to cool down a little bit just because it literally gave up all its energy on that 70 cent candle. Still trying to hold that 40s, but it's not worth it. 30s, see how it comes down? That's exactly what happens like every time we had a huge move like that. And it could definitely keep going up, but it's not worth the risk for me. See, look, it keeps going up, but it's, again, my job is not to catch the whole thing. My job is to catch a good amount and a good chunk of it and that's exactly what we did if we sold right there in the 50s and see how much you're struggling right there is not worth it this definitely can continue though so that was the last video if you guys enjoyed these boot camps so far let me know in the comments down below and other now i'll see you guys in the next video peace